on this beautiful sunny day I wanted to take a moment and showcase well not showcase but share this uh, monstrous beauty and no it's not a fridge it's supposed to be a solar dehydrator uh, and in this video I wanted to share some some notes and some ideas about this uh, solar dehydrator so if that's uh, of any interest stick around the reason we built the solar dehydrator um, is because the sun shines quite a lot here so it made sense it makes sense to see if we can use some of that uh, solar energy to dry some of the herbs and things that come from the garden um, during the growing season and um, I had no idea when I started so I looked up uh, some designs online and then you quickly quickly realize there's about a billion different ways you can build a solar dehydrator and um, but some of them basics do stack up and um, should be the same for most of them and um, yeah I'll get to that in a moment um, what started this whole journey for us is uh, basically we had some windows uh, lying around that weren't being used uh, they're quite old um, and that's also the reason why they weren't being used and you can see uh, there's one on the side and then there's the same one on the other side over here and then there's a, a taller longer one on the front and so these windows basically informed our design um, we're, we're, we're the starting point for uh, making this solar dehydrator and so what we did is uh, you can see the posts here go all the way down and even um, provide the standing points for the solar dehydrator and with posts on each side we kind of created a frame and then on the bottom you can see uh, there's another post piece of wood and another one on, on, on top so we created frames one on the side and one on the other side and then we kind of tacked the front window onto the frame that kind of gave us the basic fridge structure just because we wanted to use the uh, reuse the windows and then on the back we had a gap um, because that's where we wanted to have the door and the door um, quite a simple structure with some leftover woods as well um, nailed together with a post and then attached with three hinges on the side and then kept in place with this um, elastic band here and you can kind of easily open it and then this is what it looks like on the inside this top flap I just recently put on there because there's a lot of bugs that go in there I try and keep them out and then you can see these are the frames all the wood is basically reused salvaged wood and then there's just a simple um, pieces of wood on the side that keep the frames in place and then I went to the second hand store or the op shop and uh, bought this kind of a mesh cloth for uh, next to nothing cut it up and then put it onto the frames we have some beautiful kawakawa uh, leaves a native New Zealand plant some rose petals beautiful red rose petals and some lemon balm drying in there and then down there we have not sure if I can get it on the camera but it's a thermometer which by now reads just a little less than 30 degrees so we'll see we're still in testing phase and trying to optimize it so the basic design is you want to create airflow and so this down here, there's a gap on the front side. And so this is supposed to be sucking in the cool air. And then on the front, you can see, hopefully, we have a piece of black metal roof, uh, roofing, piece of roof um, that should warm up the air as it rises. So it comes down from the bottom, goes up, and then through the back which I just put the mesh on which is this part with the door closed hold on like that so the cold air should come from the bottom rise through there and then exit through this mesh part right here I can close the door again there we go 
That's one. That's two. Um, so yeah, and then that's the basic design. So the basics, what I understood is, you want to create an area down low. So if your window is diagonal, you just have one single window. You want to create a space where the cold air from the bottom can come up, and then as it travels up, it'll heat up, it'll become warmer, and it'll travel through, and because warm air rises, it should dry everything that's in here, and then exit through the top. And as you can see, this is where the door is at, and down here with the window, it is definitely not uh, airproof, if that's a word. So there's air leaking in and out on all the places. But nonetheless, we'll see. This has been in there for maybe an hour now. We're heading towards the midday. So we'll see how long it takes and uh, see if we can get a reading on the final temperature. One final note. Um, two final notes, actually. You can see uh, the posts that we um, attach the windows to also function as the base for our fridge fridge dehydrator solar dehydrator of course and then the final note I wanted to share is we also found some of this plastic uh, roofing uh, stuff um, alongside the road and then we just put it on a piece of wood to tilt it a bit so now it can or it should be able to withstand some not so sunny days uh, or rainy days actually and then the rain should just drip right off but keep the the wood and the solar dehydrator relatively dry uh, yeah so this is uh, simple it took us maybe two afternoons to make it together um, simple dehydrator solar dehydrator and what I, I think the message I want to get across is you know it doesn't have to be perfect and you can definitely spend a lot of time online trying to make and uh, designing your perfect solar dehydrator but this is just all the stuff we had lying around and we're just experimenting with it even if it just gets up to 30 degrees you can still dry your herbs and stuff in there and if we're lucky it might get a bit warmer and we can dry some other harvests um, this summer season as well um, so yeah don't let complex designs withhold you from just trying and seeing if you can find some simple things and some recycled things to um, make your own.